Skyrim's a game that's jam-packed with so much content that it might be impossible to see everything it has to offer, including all of the secrets hidden within its world. So let's check them out. I'm Jacob with the leaderboard, and today we're going through Easter eggs in the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. And before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to become part of our notification squad. <laughs> The Empire Strikes Back. A lot of the Easter eggs within Skyrim pay homage to pop culture, TV shows, and movies, so it makes sense to kick off this list with one of the most popular culture franchises ever, Star Wars. In the Bleak Coast Cave, players can find a Frost Troll roaming around the area. After taking down the Frost Troll, players can do a little more digging within the cave and notice a skeleton hanging from the ceiling. Not only that, but there's a sword on the ground right below the corpse. All of this is a direct reference to the scene in The Empire Strikes Back, where Luke is trapped in a Wampa Cave and must escape by using the force to pull his lightsaber from the snow and take down the Wampa. Sadly, the hero in Skyrim didn't seem to fare quite as well as our buddy Luke did. Thieves Guild Shadow Marks The Thieves Guild has always been a staple in the Elder Scrolls series. Sure, they may not be at their best in Skyrim due to living in a sewer and all that, but that doesn't mean that their presence isn't felt across the land. In fact, this little easter egg is extremely easy to miss even though it's nearly everywhere. Thieves, of course, have their own ways of communicating with one another in order to be, well, Thieves. The ones in Skyrim actually have secret marks, or shadow marks, etched into a lot of the buildings within Skyrim. These marks can communicate things such as pointing out if a building is dangerous, or noting that if a certain building may act as a safe house for thieves. It's pretty neat that the dev team added this much detail to the Thieves Guild as it gives a whole new layer of depth to the game. Now hands to yourself, sneak thief. Alice in Wonderland. The Mind of Madness side quest is a bit of a doozy in Skyrim. The quest's premise is simple enough. Help Master Shiogoroth come back from his vacation. However, once the quest kicks in, the player is teleported into the mind of Shiogoroth and is treated to an interesting conversation. This conversation takes place over a fancy dinner that is laid out just like the Mad Hatter's tea party from Alice in Wonderland. The cool thing here is that all of the food at the table is, of course, edible. The quest reward is a staff called Wabajack, which could be a reference to the poem Jabberwocky that was written by Alice in Wonderland's author, Lewis Carroll. The quest overall feels like a trip down the rabbit hole, but alas, there was no Alice or Mad Hatter to be seen within the quest itself. 300. In a perfect world, Spartans and the Dragonborn would be best friends. Sadly, we don't live in a perfect world, but it seems that King Leonidas might have ventured into the world of Skyrim. Well, at least the Leonidas from the movie 300. In Skyrim, just a little northeast of Karth Waston, it's possible to find the remains of what could possibly be Leonidas himself. In a narrow canyon, there's a saber cat that's been impaled by arrows and an axe. This appears to be a reference to the scene in 300 where a young Leonidas lures a wolf into a narrow canyon and impales it. It would have been neat to have it be an actual wolf in Skyrim, but regardless, it's a cool little nod to 300. Mammoth Companionship Mammoths are some of the coolest creatures within Skyrim. Even with the 100,003 release of Skyrim, they're still a towering marvel to discover for the first time. That is, until you ungracefully trip over a twig and then a giant clubs you into space where there are no cool mammoths to look at anymore. But how is it that a giant knows which mammoth is their trusty companion? Like, do they just get confused and mixed up when they have mammoth playdates and they can't figure out which mammoth is theirs? Actually, they have their own system in tracking down their buddy. There are two types of mammoths within Skyrim, those who are tamed by giants and those who are free. If you ever wanted to know the difference, look at their tusks. Mammoths who are tamed by giants will have special etchings on their tusks which make them stand out, while mammoths who are free have no markings at all. Lord of the Rings. There had to be at least a few Lord of the Rings references within Skyrim, right? After all, Todd Howard himself praised the Lord of the Rings movies and felt that they paved the way in making the fantasy genre popular again. There are a few references to Lord of the Rings and Skyrim, but one in particular involves one of the creepiest characters in the game. The side quest called A Night to Remember has the Dragonborn take part in a drinking game, which seems to be all in good fun. However, during a drunken spree, the Dragonborn proposes to a hag raven named Moira. The proposal was obviously not meant to have happened, so part of the quest can lead the Dragonborn heading to Moira's, uh, house? Shack? pieces of wood slapped together in a bungalow? Upon reaching her home, Moira claims that she's excited to consummate her love to you. However, all you want to do is get the ring back, so she gets upset with you and then attacks. She sounds just like a certain creature from Lord of the Rings who also has a ring tantrum, Gollum. She even screams out, my precious, during the fight with her, just like Gollum would do in Lord of the Rings. Another Lord of the Rings Easter egg is that the One Ring itself is in the dungeon of Angarvund. Once both of the gates are opened, it makes sense to want to go down the stairs and 
explore the dungeon. However, this Easter egg is behind the stairs in a chest. In that chest, players can find a ring, a decapitated hand, and a broken sword. This is an homage to Isildur from Lord of the Rings, the man who initially defeated the Dark Lord Sauron. He did so by cutting off Sauron's fingers with a broken sword, which makes this Easter egg all the more impressive. Poltergeist. There are plenty of quests and areas that are downright creepy within Skyrim, and one of those quests happens to be a nod to the classic horror film, Poltergeist. In the quest House of Horrors, players must search an old abandoned house that might be host to some Daedric activities. And the quest itself is pretty intense and spooky, making it one of the better quests within Skyrim. After the quest is finished, it's possible to go back inside the home. And at first glance, nothing seems to have changed within the house. However, on the dining room table, there are chairs stacked on top of one another. This is a reference to the classic scene from Poltergeist, where the Poltergeist moves the chairs and stacks them on top of one another in the kitchen. The chairs are not a one-to-one -one replica from the film, but it's downright creepy nonetheless. The Lady in the Lake of King Arthur. Most people know the famous story of King Arthur and his trusty sword Excalibur. One of the stories of King Arthur is that of the Lady of the Lake, the character who actually offered Excalibur to Arthur. While King Arthur himself isn't in Skyrim, the Lady of the Lake is. It, sort of. There's a lake just a little north of Bleakwood Basin, and at first it may not appear to be anything special. However, there is the skeleton of an arm just poking out of the lake holding a sword. While the sword itself isn't named Excalibur, and it really isn't all that special in terms of stats, it still seems clear that this is a reference to the Lady of the Lake. What's sad is once the sword is picked up, the arm collapses and the bones remain within the lake forever. Oh well, strange women lying in ponds distributing swords is no basis for a system of government anyway. Game of Thrones. While Skyrim predates the popular TV series, the Song of Ice and Fire book series started way before Skyrim was actually released, so it makes sense that Bethesda would hide a reference to the popular series. The reference takes place at the end of the No One Escapes Sidna Mine quest. This exchange can only happen if the Dragonborn sides in favor of Thonar Silverblood, which basically means killing Madanok in the mines. After emerging from the mines, Silverblood talks to the Dragonborn and gives you his family ring. He also says the Silverbloods pay their debts. This seems to be a direct reference to the infamous Lannister line from Game of Thrones, a Lannister always pays his debts. It all makes sense since the Silverblood family seems to also be a group of backstabbing jerks. Romeo and Juliet slash Pyramus and Thisbe. William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet has been referenced, remade, and told endlessly, so why not throw a nod into Skyrim as well? A little southeast of the Shrine to Periite, it appears that a woman lays dead by a statue with poison and a dagger nearby. On the other end of the statue is the skeleton of a human which could have been her lover. This is a reference to the tragic ending of Romeo and Juliet, where Romeo takes his own life upon finding Juliet dead, except that she isn't actually dead, but then ends up killing herself with a knife after seeing Romeo dead. I bet you your old English lit classes have just come swirling back to you now. However, the scene in Skyrim is a bit different, since the Romeo corpse is a skeleton rather than a person. So it could possibly be a reference to the story of Pyramus and Thisbe, which was an inspiration that ultimately led to Romeo and Juliet in the first place. It's another tale of two lovers who were never meant to be. The short version of it is that they plan to meet in secret, but Thisbe encounters a lion and runs off in terror. Pyramus arrives a little later, only to see a scarf covered in blood, which makes him assume that his lover was killed by the lion. And then he ends up killing himself, and then she sees his dead corpse, and then takes her own life too. But regardless, the scene in Skyrim could be a reference to Pyramus and Thisbe due to the skeleton, since it appears that the person was torn apart, possibly by a lion? Either way, it seems clear that these two lovers in Skyrim had their relationship uh, cut short. Three Billy Goats Gruff. Skyrim had to throw in plenty of fairy tales within the game, and why not go with a classic like the Three Billy Goats Gruff? The basic premise is that three goats must trick a troll that lives under a bridge so that they can cross and be safe. The scene plays out in Skyrim as well. In the hills south of Markarth, players can find a bridge that has three goats crossing, but where is that troll I hear you cry? Well, he's actually dead under the bridge. The fairy tale describes how the goats keep telling the troll that the next goat crossing would be bigger and make for a better meal. The troll believes them, but the last goat was so big that it knocked the troll off the bridge and to its death. There are no mega goats in the Skyrim version of this fairy tale, but regardless, the troll still ended up with the same fate as the fairy tale. Portal 2 slash GLaDOS. GLaDOS from the Portal series is arguably one of the best antagonists in video game history, so of course she fits naturally into Skyrim. High fantasy sandbox, sadistic, futuristic, highly intelligent robot, come on, this is basic stuff here. At Skaldafen, there's a fireplace that has a potato cooking on top of it. Though it may seem like a regular old potato, it's anything but. The potato actually has some toppings on it that appear to form an eye. Yep, the toppings are laid out to replicate how GLaDOS looked in Portal 2 when she famously became a potato. Hopefully this potato isn't out to kill you though. And there you have it. Once again, 
I'm Jacob, and thanks for watching the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Easter Eggs. Did we miss any? Which is your favorite? Comment below and let us know. Don't forget to click the bell icon to become part of our notification squad, and if you like getting more from your games, subscribe to the leaderboard, your home for video game facts.